So let's learn how the while loop works in JavaScript. If you watched the previous video about the for loop, we know that the for loop is used when you mainly know how many times to do something. A while loop is used when you want to continue to do something based upon an expression. You can use them interchangeably if you want. You could use a while loop as a for loop where you're keeping track of something for a certain number of times. However, if you do that, then you're responsible to make sure that you take care of updating and manipulating the counter. Then again, you do the same thing in the for loop where you update and manipulate the counter. So it's really a preference of what you would like to use. The while loop, like the for loop, is a preconditioned loop, meaning it checks the condition before you drop into the loop. So that means the minimum number of times a while loop will execute will be zero. Because if the expression didn't evaluate to true, it won't be executed. For example, let's go ahead and create a brand new file. And I'm going to save that file. And I'm going to call it while sample.js. And I'll create a variable. I'll call it iCount. And I'll set iCount is equal to 5. And I could have just done that all on one line if I wanted to. While I count is less than 3. Since I count is 5, it is not less than 3. So whatever I do for the while loop would not get executed. So the minimum number of times it would be executed would be 0. Let's do the following. Let's create a different variable instead of I count. We'll call it B continue. And we'll go ahead and assign it the value of true. And then in our while loop, we'll say while B continue is equal to true. Now I really don't have to say equal true. Make sure it's a double equal because this is a Boolean variable, meaning the only values it can have are true and false. I could just get away with saying that. And it would say, what is the value of your variable? Currently it's a true. OK, go and do something. Maybe it's a false or a true false or a false. And so it would say, OK, I'm not going to do this loop. But I prefer spelling it out so it's a little bit more readable. It does require typing a little bit more. And let's do the following. Let's go ahead and let's get that data from the user. And instead of using the Boolean, let's change that now to a string. And let's do the following. S continue equal to prompt. And let's ask, would you like to enter a team? And on that prompt, we want to try to tell the user what they should enter. So let's do this. We're going to hint, give them a hint in that prompt that we want them to enter a Y or an N. Be aware this does not force the user to enter in a Y or an N. And then in this loop we'll say while S continue is equal to the letter Y. Then we'll drop into here and create a brand new variable to keep track of the team. Remember, I use Hungarian notation. You don't have to do that, but I do it for readability. S team name is equal to prompt. What is the team name? And then let's just do a, an alert. We'll say welcome. Concatenate the team name. Remember, concatenate is the plus sign, and that's where you take one value and combine it with another. So this program will say, let's prompt the user to see if they want to enter data. Hopefully it's a Y or an N. We'll store that result to S continue. As long as S continue is equal to a Y, we'll say, what is your team name? Store it to the variable, and then we'll welcome the team name. Then it comes back up here. Well, what's the problem? 
The problem is that s continue is still y. And so what's going to happen? This is called an endless loop because we didn't do anything else to s continue. So that's one thing about a while loop you've got to remember. And that is you have to manipulate the expression that keeps you in the loop. So what we could do is come down to here, do that, and we'll say, would you like to enter another team? Let's say they enter no. We come up to here. It says that's false, and so it gets out of the loop and continues. We'll just do an alert. Let's go ahead and take this code and come over to inspect, control shift I. Let's paste that code and see what happens. Would you like to enter a team? I'm going to press capital Y. OK. What is the team name? Jazz. OK. Welcome, Jazz. Would you like to enter another team? I'm going to press N, capital N. OK. And it ends the program. Seems to work, right? Let's try it one more time. I pasted the code in, ran it again. Would you like to enter a team? This time I'm going to put, uh, let's go ahead and do a capital Y again. OK. What is the team name? Jazz. OK. Welcome, Jazz. Would you like to enter another team? This time let's press the letter Y, lowercase y. OK. Thanks. So what happened? Back in our code, we said, as long as it's a capital Y, stay in the loop. And so when I entered in a lowercase y, it said, hey, are you a capital Y? No, I'm a lowercase y. And so it got out of the loop. So what if I did this? I like to use parentheses to clear things up. Make sure they all match. This now says, while the input is either a y, or a lowercase y. This symbol is your logical or, and you'll find it above your enter key with the shift backslash. Let's copy this code and let's go run it one more time. Would you like to enter a team? Capital Y, Jazz, OK. Welcome, Jazz. Would you like to enter a T? Lowercase y. What's the team name? Cougars. Welcome, Cougars. Would you like to enter another team? Yes. I'm going to type the word yes. OK. And it ends the program. So now what happens? The while statement is only looking for a capital Y or a lowercase y. And we've told the user, please enter in a capital Y. But we're trying to help the user out. So whether or not you want to use a while loop or a for loop, you can see the while loop is used more for an expression. A for loop is used for counting. On a while loop, it's a preconditioned loop, meaning you have to check the condition before you drop into the loop. Notice I use curly braces when there's more than one statement associated with the while loop. And then within the while loop, it's your responsibility to make sure that that expression gets reevaluated. Otherwise, you'll stay in that loop forever.